what's going on family we are back with another video guys and hey man i'm really about to go in on this one um it's gonna be more of a spiritual freestyle i'm just gonna be speaking from the heart um very little notes prepared uh but i just want to talk to you guys and just keep it real um so in this video i want to talk to you about navigating emotions with the lord right I want to talk to you about navigating emotions with the Lord. Um, and the reason I want to make this video is because it's been coming up in conversation with people close to me, um, friends and family and stuff like that. And it's just something that um, I hope that I can shed insight on um, and allow people to really kind of have some liberation and be set free regarding emotions, because it's something that if you continue to yield to them and the subjectivity of them, you can put yourself in a harmful place, right? And so before we go any further, I want to talk about two words specifically that I'm going to probably use in, <laughs> probably be using pretty frequently throughout this video, but I want to explain what they mean so we can lay some groundwork. So the first word is subjectivity, right? So what does subjectivity mean? It means this. Subjectivity is the quality of being based on or influenced by personal feelings, tastes, or opinions, right? So the key word there is personal. So subjectivity is based on your personal feelings, tastes, or opinions, right? Now, the other word I want to talk about is objectivity, right? So what is being, what does objective mean? So objectivity is the lack of favoritism towards one side or the other, freedom from bias. So when I'm speaking about objectivity, specifically in this video, I'm going to be speaking about the Lord's objectivity. We're going to be looking at it through the lens of the Lord's objectivity, because why? The Lord's word is the truth. Right. Is it a way? It's the way It's the truth It's the life It's the firm foundation, which we should build our house on It's the solid rock. The Lord is the same yesterday, today and forever. Right. There is no there is no switch up. The Lord is forever steadfast. He is forever faithful. There's so many different scriptures that we can just link his objectivity to. So when we're talking about that in this video, we're going to be using objectivity through the lens of the Lord's perspective. Right. And when I say subjectivity. Subjectivity is going to be talking about our own personal feelings towards a matter. OK, so more specifically, we're talking about emotions and the emotion um, through conversation with my friend earlier today that came up was rejection. Right. We were speaking about about rejection. And he asked me a question, do I feel rejected based upon something that has taken place in my life recently? He asked, do you feel, specifically you, Brian, do you feel rejected? And my answer was this. If I think too heavily on that emotion of feeling rejected, then yes, then yes, I would feel rejected. However, I know that that's not the highest truth because the Lord is not about rejection. Right. Feeling rejected is not an emotion that stems from the Lord. As a matter of fact, it's the opposite. Right. The Lord is about unity. The Lord is about oneness. Right. There's unity in the body of Christ. And so what I want people to realize is that when we feel certain emotions and they're negatives, specifically like rejection, what you, we need to get in the habit of doing is taking those emotions to the Lord and then getting his perspective, his objective perspective about that emotion. Because what will happen is so many times people will feel certain emotions, right? They'll, in this one, we're talking about rejection. So someone could have made me feel rejected because they broke up with me. Uh, someone in my, in my workplace, I got laid off. Now I feel rejected. Um, going back to a childhood trauma, my parents made me feel rejected. You know, something like that. We've all, depending on the severity of it and our subjectivity to yielding to it, we have all felt rejection at some point in time to a certain degree. 
But the thing is, if we continue to hyperfixiate on that feeling of rejection, we are falling further away from what the word of God says, because the word of God says nothing about he he wants us to feel rejected as a, as opposed. He says, come to me. He wants us to come to him. He wants us to 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 embrace him just as much as he embraces us. We, he wants us to embrace him. And there's no. There's the Lord is not the author of the feeling of rejection. That is a lie from the enemy that is ultimately causing us to be disconnected and feel disconnected from God. And so if we allow that subjectivity of ourselves to to fall victim to that feeling of rejection, now we are drawing further away from the Lord. And so that's what I want people to understand. It's. uh the world does not discriminate against us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The, whole, the, the world does not discriminate against us. You see, here's the reality. If there was a black hole in the floor, it wouldn't matter if I was fat, tall, skinny, short, blonde, uh, black, white, Asian, Hispanic. It would not matter. If there was a black hole in the floor and I walked over that black hole, I would fall into it just as much as the next man behind me would. And so when you look at life through the lens that the world does not discriminate against you, you remove more of that subjectivity and you won't be as victim to falling to your own subjectiveness pertaining a situation, right? Somebody cuts you off in traffic and you're just reacting, right? Somebody cuts you off in traffic and you're like, okay, here's the middle finger, and I, I'm saying some curse words. You're reacting to that situation rather than responding to that situation, right? Somebody gives you a raise at work. Now you're happy. You're reacting to the situation rather than responding, right? And so what happens is so many times when we walk in the mindset that the world is discriminating against us, um, just to give you another example, today I was at the gas station, right? And I walked up to the lady at the counter and I was like, you know, hey, how's your day going so far? Um, and she was like, it's been good. I've only been here working for about two hours, you know, and we just exchanged some small talk. And then she was like, uh, this register next to me has been has been down all day, though. And as a result, when people are coming in and they're paying for or, or wanting to pay for their purchases or whatever, they are getting annoyed with the fact that they have to wait in line because there's a register down. Right. And so for me, if I walked into that environment and into that situation, only considering the perspective of myself and my own subjectivity to what I need and what I want and how I want to feel, if things aren't going my way now, I feel annoyed. I.e., all of those people who came in prior, they felt annoyed because they felt like the world was discriminating against them in that moment, not not. Not literally, maybe they didn't think about it, but that's by the way that they responded. That's how that's what that means. That's how they reacted. That's what they were showing. So when you think that the world is discriminating against you, you are easier. It's more easy for you to fall victim to your own subjectivity about a subject matter. And it's not until you take a step back and take into perspective the Lord's objectiveness pertaining to the situation now you are no longer reacting to the situation you have the ability to respond to the situation you have the ability ability to respond in light of the of the lord's objectiveness objectiveness to the situation i hope this is making sense i hope this is making sense guys because this is how when we turn to the lord and we and, and we don't fall as victim because here's the thing here's the thing let me just say this real fast. If I lived my whole life only through the subjectivity of how I felt in every situation, I'm leaving myself more susceptible to have soul trauma. I'm leaving myself more susceptible to have soul trauma, right? So we know that we're spiritual beings possessing a soul living in a body. The soul's three components are the mind, the will, and the emotions, right? The mind, the will, and the emotions. If I live in a world where I'm hyper fixated on my own subjectivity to a reality that I've put, that, that I'm that I'm quote unquote walking in, then I leave myself more victim to be 
to, to have trauma to my soul. Right. So if I if I if I walked in rejection long enough, that will have repercussions on my soul. And those repercussions will begin to manifest not only in my physical life and like surrounding in my environment, but it will also manifest in my body as sickness and disease, dis-ease, not disease, but dis-ease, lack of ease. And then if there's if there's prolonged dis-ease, that turns into disease. OK, so that's just that's just a little bit of that. But the thing is this. Hold on. I'm getting a phone call. Uh, we got to we got to hold on on that one because we got to keep this thing going, baby. We got to keep this thing going. So back on topic, if I if I subject myself to that feeling long enough, I can have soul trauma. Right. But this is the reality, guys. And this is what I want you to realize. Jesus saves he came to save souls, right? If we look at, if we look at uh, John 6, 39, right? I want you guys to really catch, catch this. If we look at John 6, 39, what was the will of the Father through the life of Jesus? John 6, 39 tells us, and I'm going to read from the New Living Translation because I really like this, translation's, uh, this, this translation of it. It says this, and this is the will of God that I should not lose even one of all of those he has given to me, but that I should raise them up in the last day. Here it is, guys. This is the reality. The Lord had predestined souls for Jesus to save while he was on earth before the foundations of the earth were even laid. God predestined the souls that he wanted Jesus to save before he even laid the foundations of the earth, before he even created mankind. That is the will of Jesus. And so the will, or excuse me, the will of the father for Jesus. And then as Jesus saves souls, he is creating a body, right? And this is the church. This body is grafted out of Jesus. So if we even go back to Adam and Eve, right? God created Adam and through Adam, he took the rib out of Adam through the side, you know, took out Adam's rib through his side and created Eve. And then when Adam woke up and saw Eve, he said, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. It is the same exact thing for Jesus and the church, even even to the point where we can see Jesus on the cross. And when he was pierced in the side out of his side, because he was pierced in the side and and being pierced in the side is the doorway to his heart. Right. The being pierced in the side is the doorway to Jesus's heart. But the thing is this. After he was pierced in the side, blood and water came out. And from that, that is a representation that the church is being grafted from the same body of Christ. This is why we are supposed to be mirror images as the as as the church. We are supposed to be the mirror image of Jesus. This is why he, he calls us to uh, buy gold refined in fire. And in Revelation, it talks about the fire of his eyes. We are supposed to stare at Jesus. We are supposed to glare at Jesus. We are supposed to gaze upon him. And that of which you gaze upon is what you become like. This is why you also have to be very careful to what you're listening to and what you're letting into your ear gates, whatever rap music, whatever secular stuff. And you also have to be careful about what you watch because that's entering your eye gate. And what you listen to and what you watch is what you become like. So just, just as a side note, cut the news off cut the news off get off social media if you have to because that stuff is 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 it's not of the lord in most cases you know not saying that there's not godly people you can follow online but the reality of news when was the last time you watched news and it was edifying <laughs> never <laughs> never you know what i'm saying so that in which you gaze upon is what you become like when we gaze upon the lord jesus in revelation it talks about his the eyes of fire that fire is designed to purify us in his image by purging out all the things that are not of him and causing us to be more purified in his image because he wants to raise up a bride, a.k.a. the church. The church is the bridegroom. Right. And so the reward of Jesus saving all the souls from the father, the reward from Jesus saving all the souls and creating a body of Christ is so that way he can marry them. That is the reward. That is the reward from the father to Jesus, the bride. The bride is the reward to Jesus from the father. I hope that's making sense. I hope that is making sense. 
Uh, I just had to break that down. We got off on a tangent, but uh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. If you're if you're able to catch that reality of it, guys, um, you will begin to read the Bible differently. You'll begin to want to seek the Lord differently. You'll begin to want to just. I'm telling you guys, there's days that I just I just magnify the Lord and I just gaze upon him and I'm just brought to my knees in tears because he's so good. He's really so good. But the thing is this, guys, he wants to save souls. This is why he said, I will even leave the ninety nine for the one, because all the souls that have been given unto him, he wants to save. But the free will comes into place there. Right. We all have a choice because here's the thing. Jesus died for everyone. But you have to be willing. You have to make that choice to want to receive that free gift of grace, which etern which leads to eternal salvation in Lord Jesus. You got to want that. You got to want that for yourself because the Lord gave us free will. God gave us free will. Right. And so you have to want to choose that. But getting back on topic, right, getting back on topic. When we look at our emotions. If they're negative emotions rather than than becoming hyper fixating on them, which ultimately can lead to soul trauma, which can ultimately leave, uh, put us at a place where we're feeling disconnected from the Lord. What we need to do is feel those emotions. I'm not telling everybody, I'm not saying don't feel those emotions. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying feel those emotions and then take them to the Lord. So when you feel those emotions through your own subjective lens, right? i.e. in this video we're talking about rejection if i ever felt rejection i need to feel that emotion if you ever feel rejection feel the emotion feel it it's okay but take that rejection to the lord and see what he has to say about it through the objectivity of who he is and once he highlights to you my child this is not of me actually this is what i say about it i don't never want you to feel rejected i will never leave nor forsake you I will leave the 99 for the one. Then you realize that that feeling that you're feeling is not of the Lord and it's actually of Satan. It's a it's a it's deception. It's a lie. It's a lie. And so if you're able and I'm and see this is why I made a video on taking every thought captive, because if you take it, every thought captive and make it unto the Lord, you're constantly having the ability to review these emotions in perspective of the lord's objectiveness and see what he has to say about it ultimately to provide you more clarity but also more freedom and liberation from these negative emotions that he never wanted any of us to feel in the first place ultimately to the extent that he was willing to send his son to die for us so that way we could learn and be purified in the image and feel all the positive and wonderful emotions that comes with knowing the Lord and never have to experience negative emotions again. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, if you are able to to take a step back from that and look through every emotion that you're feeling through the objectiveness of the Lord, you will start to live life more free. You won't be a machine because some essentially you're, you're like a machine that, OK, Somebody cut me off in traffic, now I'm mad. Somebody stole something from me, now I'm angry. Uh, somebody cheated on me, now I'm hurt. Uh, somebody gave me a raise, now I'm happy. It's like you're going through life and people are just pushing your buttons. And as people push different buttons, you're just responding. Or excuse me, not, you're not responding, you're just reacting. Which is like a machine, right? If I press, if I press play on this camera, it's going to do what I tell it to do. So now you're essentially allowing your environment, whether that be your job, whether it be the people you're surrounding yourself, you're allowing your environment to control you. You're a machine. You are a machine. But it's not until you take a step back from that, look at it through the lens of the Lord's objectivity, of, of the Lord's objectiveness pertaining to the situation. Now you have the freedom to respond. You have the freedom to respond and you can respond in wisdom and knowledge of God, right? So anyways, guys, we're going to wrap that up there. Long story short, whenever you're feeling an emotion and it's negative, take it to the Lord, see what he has to say about it, get his perspective on it. And in that way you grow because every time you do that, it's, it's the Lord outlining to you. You need to grow in this area. You need to grow in this area. 
If you're feeling rejection, that's because you don't know me pertaining to what rejection is. And you don't know what I have to say pertaining to rejection. So when you take rejection to the Lord, now you get his perspective on it. Now you get growth in the Lord. Woo-wee! Well, I'm telling you what, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit going in, baby. I'm telling you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let this out, oh, man. I'll just pray that this video brings some edification to somebody that it brings some enlightenment to somebody. The Lord is too good, guys. The Lord is really just too good. Um, but either way, that's what it comes down to. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, guys, stay prayed up. Stay faithful. Stay blessed. It's raining outside. Stay dry. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in the next one.